that was the very first bar I did. And I, I just took a video of me pulling in a picture of the bar. Cause I thought to myself, I want to take a picture of it. So people know what it looks like. So yeah, if they sure, drive by. The road. And then I did a pan of the back of the bar and just a picture of my bush light sitting there. That was it. It was a 27 second video, I believe. And I, I created the account. I actually took the video before I created the account. I created the account, dropped it, and it went over half a mil. And I'm like, what? According to Google, Wisconsin has the fifth most bars of any state at 2,732, which I know is way shorter than it actually is. The top four are New York, California, Texas, and Illinois. More impressively, Wisconsin has the third most bars per capita, which is the number of bars per 100,000 people at 46.92. To give a frame of reference, New Hampshire is only a 1.54, which means Wisconsin has roughly 30 times as many bars per like number of people as New Hampshire. North Dakota has number one and Montana has number two. And that's because those uh, are, there's just no population there. So if there's a five person town, then of yeah. course there has to be a bar in a church, right? So... Um, however, those states combined between those two are 901 bars versus Wisconsin's 2,732. All that to say is we have a ton of bars and one man had the idea of actually going to all those bars. So welcome to the show, Wisco Dive Bars, AKA Jared Shoots. Shoots. Yep. Cool, dude. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, having me on. I'm excited. How many bars are there? So that's actually what started this was that Google search. <laughs> um, and then I was like, what if, you know, and, and the very next day, Wisco Dive Bar Reviews was born uh, January 14th of 2022. So a little over two and a half years there. Are, I've been told by the president of the Wisconsin Tavern League that there's actually 9,000 bars in the state. Whoa. There's over 5,000 in the Tavern League alone. Yeah. So Wisconsin... And I, I did this math uh, uh, like a month or so ago. Wisconsin is like 54,132 square miles of land. Okay. Wisconsin has 9,000 bars. That means we have a bar every 6.017 square miles. Wow. When you think about how <laughs> much of like the state is empty. Right. Because yeah. it's like national forest, yeah. like the Shawamigan National Forest. I don't even know how many miles that is, but it's big. Yeah. Right. And there's no bars in that whole space. So like, I mean, yeah, you just go to Water Street in Eau Claire and you'll see. <laughs> yeah. And then you go, you know, to La Crosse, you know, yeah. Milwaukee, like State Street, Madison. Um, you know, there's so many, so many great dive bars, no matter how big the city is. Um, yeah. I love the ones. I mean, I love them all, but the ones that are. The town of 50 people and they have two bars yeah i'm like what is going like this is crazy and yeah. i absolutely love it and but they're kind of the community centers they they you know absolutely I mean? are. it's not so much even about like getting hammered at those places yeah. it's just like that's where people get together to discuss their week on their friday for you know what i mean uh, for the older generation for sure um it is basically their social media mm -hmm. that's how they find out what's going on at you know, they've got something going on at the church or whatever, you know, next weekend right. or, you know, hear about maybe somebody passing away or whatever. That's where they, that's where they go to get their information and they go to unwind. And, and I, it's, I tell people like these dive bars are the coldest beers and the warmest hearts. And I, I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, it, we're in a time and age now where most people live online. You know, the majority yeah. of their friendships are ones that are online and like human to human interaction has gone down so much, especially after the pandemic right. where people no longer, a lot of people who had office jobs could start working remotely. And it's, it, there is a correlation between that and mental health for a reason. Oh, you know for what I mean? For sure. You need to have like a physical embrace of a hug, the endorphins that come from that. You need to see somebody in person to really build yeah. a true relationship Remember, with well, them. Well, we went through a stretch where like, I believe the government told us at one time, like handshakes weren't going to be a thing anymore. Right. Totally. I'm like, are you, um, you know, and I doing what I do, I keep the government out of it. Sure. Um, I don't care how you vote. Sure. Just it's how you vote. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think it part doesn't of that define you different... as a person, you know? Yeah, but once you start leaving your little bubble, that's where it changes, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't talk politics on here either because I have my views, but I'm friends with a lot of people that don't share my views. And I've found that by just traveling internationally, but also within the state and all over the place, wherever you're from, that bubble you live within, you relate to those people. And so you share a lot of the beliefs with mm -hmm. those people. And because things are so polarized in the media, it makes you think that everybody else is awful on the other side. But yeah. then if you go into one of those other bubbles, you realize like, no, it's just their media is telling you that everybody else is a bad guy. Right. But we're not that much different. Um, I, that, I I think 80% of Americans are 
similar. Like yeah. we, I think so. We all want our kids to go to school where it's safe. We we all want you know secured borders. You know, to, there's obviously different aspects of what we consider secure borders or whatever. But yeah, um, and not to get political, but it's like I said, we all kind of want the same. Totally. Thing. Yeah, we want. Do we want? crazy people with guns running all over the absolutely not Yeah, nobody wants that. <laughs> you know i i hunt um but i've grown up to you know i've always respected guns and right. uh you know it's the bad people but how do you keep it out right of well and again if you look at like where you're from right if somebody grows up in a city guns are only a negative thing for them right and it only represents violence yep. if you grow up out in the woods guns represent something totally different to you. And so we'll get oh, away from the topic, but yeah. it's just like that there it's not, we aren't as different as like the media forces us yeah. or pushes well, us to think yeah. that we are. Um, I, I like to ask this at the beginning of the show, although we're already talking a bunch cause that's just kind of, I knew this was going to happen yeah. in your own words. Who are you and what are you passionate about? I am Jared, AKA the Wisco dive bar guy. And I am passionate about dive bars and positivity and small businesses throughout the state of Wisconsin. Dude, I think that's a big part of it. Um, and you've talked about it in some other interviews, uh, which you've done a lot of random interviews, but I feel like they've been very sporadic yeah. and they've really been on really random things. Yeah. Like one of the things I saw you were on, like being interviewed out, like from something in New York. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, have you done a lot of other shows that, that are more like actually Midwest? Yeah, I have like, I've done some stuff, um, like NBC 12 out of Brian Lander. I did a, a, thing with them they do a uh, they do a show like a pre-news show up there called yeah, okay. up north at four yeah um you know in random podcasts and uh but it was probably man six seven weeks after i started this one of my followers messaged me <clears throat> excuse me and uh said dude you better be ready to blow up the bennington show is just talking about you and i'm like i messaged him back i'm like man that's awesome what the hell's the Bennington show? Right. Yeah. You know, it turns out I had no idea. Like it, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers. Uh, Ron Bennington and his daughter, Gail Bennington, are the only father-daughter radio show in the history of Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, they're on channel 103. And I thought, well, let's see if Ron has a, a Instagram account. And I messaged him thinking, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like two hours later, he messaged me back. He's like, yeah, we totally dig your TikToks. We'd love to have it at our show sometime and so i got messaged back and forth with his producer and they got my number and and like eight days later i did a half hour interview on their show yeah i listened to that that was that's wild but you know i interviewed this dude wayne hoffman a, a long time ago and he's just such an inspiration to me and just like the nicest dude when i go to florida i hit him up and we go get drinks and stuff he's one of the bigger illusionists in the world oh, right yeah. he's been on every tv show i love that stuff um yeah dude he's He's a genius, but he was on Ellen DeGeneres a really long time ago, like before he was famous, really. Um, and so I was kind of talking to him about it. And I think it was more off mic that I was talking about it with him. And he basically said, like, you just have to be in the right place at the right time as far as like you need to offer the solution to a problem somebody has at the right time. Right. And he said, so for something like Ellen, like whoever is lining up their guests, they just need to have people like in mind, which you may hit them up and have the best story ever, but they got 10 other people locked in right now. It's not the right time. Right. However, a guest may fall through and you may just be messaging them at the right time where you're top of mind. Not You're, you're not the only interesting, cool person they have access to. Yeah. It's just you were the easiest access right in front of them that was top of mind. And that happens a lot. And that's why I always try to explain to people like, you can't get so bummed out by hearing no from things. Like people don't wanna hear rejection. I'm, I hate hearing rejection mm -hmm. as well. But a lot of the times it's not that you're being rejected. It's just you're not currently <laughs> the best solution the timing, to their problem. Timing so you have to constantly get back. Yeah. And I'm like, Quick Trip, man, I hit up Quick Trip, I don't even know how long ago. Uh, it was two years ago, three years, a long time ago. I think they had like 19,000 followers when I started, yeah. when I hit them up. It was a long time ago. And I was like, I would love to work with you guys. I'm like, well, we're not really in the podcast space. I'm like, okay, cool. But you could always reach out again. Okay, yeah. cool. Three months later, hey, you want to get in the podcast space? No, not really, not yet, but you can hit us up. Cool. Three months later, hey, you want to get in the podcast space? Like, I was relentless. Be persistent, yeah. You know, because... 
I knew it wasn't that they didn't like what I did or they didn't want to support it necessarily, like, or they didn't want to be aligned. The timing just wasn't right for them. Exactly. Yeah. And then finally, one of the times when I hit them up, they were like, actually, right now, we just got permission to expand our influencer program. This is probably the right time. Yeah. It's like, sick, dude. Their social media is brilliant. Yeah, Paige, is, Paige and Hayden. I think, yeah. I, I guess I don't know for sure. I think Paige is the one who's more of the creative one yeah. behind that. But mm -hmm. like... Yeah, they took it from like the 19,000 or whatever to like now they're at what, 175K yeah. or more in the in a course of a couple of years for a gas station chain. That's wild. Yeah, it would have been probably November, December of 2022. Um, they messaged me yeah. and said, hey, we love your we love your stuff. We think quick trips and dive bars go hand in hand. And I'm like, yep. Thought to myself, did Paige just set the hook? <laughs> you know um so i was like all right and, and and at that time they were going through the transition of um their ceo retiring um so they ended up getting back a hold of me in january of 2023 then sure um, and that's when i signed my first contract with them and um now i'm on my second contract with them which is going to be expiring before too long so um hopefully there'll be a third yeah, I well. literally just signed my yeah. renewal with them. So mm -hmm. I am jazzed about it because I had this imposter syndrome of like, are they do? Does anyone really think I'm cool? Like, does anyone <laughs> actually like what I do <laughs> at all? You know what I mean? Because we all kind of go through that. Um, but even not that it really like it, it's just one small thing to show. But like when a brand that you align with, you have a meeting with them and they're like, yes, in fact, working with you for the last six months has been dope. And we do think what you're doing is cool. And we would like to offer a new contract mm -hmm. was like, oh, cool. Yeah. So I'm not lame. That's that's pretty yeah, rad. That, you know, and that's <laughs> I know how much work goes into doing what I do and to have people like Quick Trip and Nicolet yeah. um, tell you how much they appreciate it and, and show you financially mm -hmm. um, means means a lot because I don't think I could do anywhere near as much as what I do if it wasn't for yeah, them. Yeah, let's and let's talk about that. So your your general story is you were at work and you had this idea of like, I wonder how many bars are in Wisconsin. So you Google it, you find out there's like a lot of bars <laughs> in Wisconsin, right? That 2700 number, but really it's a lot higher than that. And then it's like, oh, cool. Well, I would like to go visit some bars. And then you made a video, which was just at one of your local bars, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that has over half a million views now. And it just yeah. kind of like, started to take off but really right away at that point you had that one video where were you at were you like here's the next 10 bars in my phone that i want to go visit like kind of so, how did it start to evolve it was funny how it how it happened because the very first bar langer's bar they call it far east ellsworth ellsworth cheese curds it's maybe five miles east of town so i that was the very first bar i did and i i just took a video of me pulling in a picture of the bar because I thought to myself, I want to take a picture of it so people know what it looks like. So yeah, they sure, drive by. The road. And then I did a pan of the back of the bar and just a picture of my bush light sitting there. That was it. It was a 27 second video, I believe. And I created the account. I actually took the video before I created the account. I created the account, dropped it, and it went over half a mil. And I'm like, what? What yeah. the hell is going on? I'm like, okay. And so then I go to the next bar and the next bar, the spillway in Spring Valley, which is my my go to watering hole in my hometown. For whatever reason, I did. Hey, I'm here in Spring Valley, you know, my hometown outside my local watering hole, yeah. spillway, you know, and then and did a walk in. And like, that was it. Like bar number two, I found it like I like, that's it. That's that intro that that has stuck. Um, I have changed things with. Uh, um, I used to just put music over top of it and I would do a write up, you know, kind of a, mm -hmm. a written review. Um, and right from the start too, I, I told myself I'm, everything's going to be positive mm -hmm. um, because I don't care what our government or media says, like positivity is never going to go out of style. Yeah. Sure. Um, and it, like, that's been such a blessing because I get the best version of everybody everywhere I go. Um, I could walk into any dive bar and, you know, God forbid somebody be sitting there after maybe just going through a divorce or um somebody passed away or whatever and they're just in the dumps you know drinking their sorrows away and i walk in with this positive vibe that i've created around me which is so cool and then they're like oh hey man like i follow you you know yeah. and even if it's only for 10 minutes mm -hmm. they got that mental break yeah. from from the real world 
Um, so it, like, I, I love that, um, I that, I, that, that I offer that to people. That would help a lot in general, just enjoying what you're doing because a lot of people are tempted to put out controversial things, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I, this one dude that I know with a really big podcast, I won't say who he is. Um, I was talking to him and I'm like, what do you think I should do to improve my show? Like, how could this get better? And don't try to guess who this is. I inter- interviewed this person a long time ago and I'm not talking hate. This dude's genius. Anyways, he was like, well, like pretty simple, man. Just like ask them things that are hot topics and controversial questions, cut those into clips and post them. And I was like, man, yeah, like I see what you're saying and I, they would be clickbaity, like they would work, but I really am not trying to piss people off. And I'm really trying to like inspire people. And that really does not align with that. And I think if I would have done that, it would have been a lot harder for me to get a hold of people. Right. People wouldn't have like gave me a good reference or connected me to this person. People would come in with a big wall up because they're worried about what I may or may not ask. Since I've never done that in over the hundred and I don't even 150 plus full length interviews, but then I've done a bunch of small ones and like hundreds of people I've interviewed. I've never had anyone afterwards like message me like, Hey, can you take part of this down? Like, Hey, I don't like, blah, blah. like, yeah. It, and for me, it's made it so much nicer. Cause then when I go into an interview, everybody has this welcoming. They're excited because they're like, Oh, this is going to be fun. And yeah. you're like, you're going to make me look like my best self. And I'm right. like, right. That's what I want to do. Yeah. You're not going to get halfway through an interview and pick a topic and, and kind of, right. you know, dig them, whatever. Yeah. But, or take anything out of context. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I, I just think the positive, the positivity aspect of it is just so cool. And I didn't realize how awesome that was going to be. There's just not enough of it. Yeah. Well, you know? and that's the thing. If I go into a bar, but at the same time, these bars get the best version of me too, because right, sure. I absolutely love doing this so much. Um, but if I go into a bar and I'm a, you know, people enjoy what I do and what I say, and they think I'm a great guy, they're going to tell 10 people. But mm-hmm. if I go in and I'm an a hole, yeah, they're gonna tell 150 people. Yeah, that's just the way the world works. I mean, it's not just at dive bars. That's everything. Like negativity spreads way faster than positivity does. Yeah, well, it's that whole thing too of like you get 10 compliments and one uh, criticism. You remember the criticism? Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? And yeah. that happens to me all the time. Mm-hmm. And I just have to try to remember that like there's for however many people do agree with you or like you, it's the people who don't that are going to be the loudest and get in your head right. and you just like, can't let that happen. And it's impossible to make everyone like you anyway. Oh, like, you, that's yeah. just never going to happen because and, just because other people like you will be the reason people don't like you. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, Even if they don't have a reason and, at all. And it's, it's sad. And especially like this time of year with the election stuff. And it's, yeah. it is, I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news in 20 years. Sure. Um, but y- you can't escape it. You mm-hmm. cannot escape the negative government freaking 12 year old middle school name calling yeah. crap that's going on right now. And we've got to deal with it for another three months. You know, yeah. it's it honestly drains me and it makes me want to freaking puke, you know? Yeah. Well, okay. So let's go back. You, you started going to these bars. Things took off really fast. Um, when did you decide, like uh, the hat seems to have been something you must've done like real early on, but at some point you must've realized like, this is not going to be sustainable if I don't figure out some kind of way to balance this with making money. Cause this is fun. But all of a sudden when you're driving to bars that are over an hour away and you feel like you need to go to however many week to week, month Mm -hmm. to month, like it's a lot of money that you're putting in It's a lot of time and energy that you're putting in. It's not just you taking the quick video. Like right. it's way more that goes into mm-hmm. that. At what point did you realize like, okay, I, I either need to make this into a business or I, I just can't do it. I think before I even had the account, I think I had it turned into a business in my head like that, sure. like that January 13th when I made that video of my own on my own TikTok account, um, where I talked about how many, the 2,700 bars or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I don't want to get into the creator fund and get suppressed, you know, because I'm in the creator fund. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to stay out of the creator fund and create something where um, I can make money selling merchandise. And my logo, my first logo that I created, which is the logo on my vodka bottle, I had that idea and I thought, what if I do that? Have the state um, basically a beer mug filling up with beer. And, uh, you know, it's, so it's white and gold. If you throw that on a navy blue, shirt hoodie whatever it's brewer colors throw it on green it's it's packer colors sure. you know that was the mindset that kind of like it it really came together quick in my head um and and to 
to think that it's that it's come to having that logo on a bottle of vodka now that it's it's uh it's, it's crazy and i'm always thinking of trying to think of new ways to make money without because i've never charged a bar a penny 645 sure. bars i've hit wow. and i've never taken one dollar out of their till and sure. i that's that's the way i want to keep it too because yeah. i'm here to support them i'm not here to take money from them yeah. i tell them I, I, i'll I'll gladly take all your money out of your pull tab pouch, but I won't ever touch what's in your till. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you have to stand by certain ethics, right? Mm -hmm. Like what? Yeah. What? What are you about in the first place? Morals and, before money, right? Exactly. And I think it like that. It not only does that like really show through, like if you aren't true to it, but I think it like kind of kills you from growth, right? right? Because then people don't see it as genuine, and therefore they don't care about the thing, which then, like. I guess I always look at everything with business as like you always, always play the long game, mm -hmm. always play the long game because unless you're trying to make a quick buck and dip out, right. like you're going to, if you're trying to make the dollar today, it's going to cost you 10 down the line. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? If you, if you're sacrificing and all these other things. So you started going to bars, you had, did you make the merchandise? right away? Were you selling it right away? I would say like these license plate hats, um, Gosh, I think probably March. So probably two months. Well, that, so that was pretty quick. Yeah. Then. Okay. Um, and, and you just made like a Wix website or something online. Or I like... actually, I just started selling stuff hand to hand combat. Oh, you know, sure. right away. Like um, you had it printed and made. Yeah. You know, locally or whatever. And then yep, you brought right the in, box in your truck. Yeah. Right in uh, uh, NBC Sports, right across the street from my dive bar in my hometown of Spring Valley, town of fourteen hundred people. Why not support another small business? Yeah, you know? sure. Yeah. Um, and it, now it's it's grown, and I like the shirt that I have just came out. It's available online. I went through because that place is so small. They don't even they don't offer drop shipping, yeah. so I can't. You know, and I totally get that. Um, so now I'm with uh, Furlong Design Studios out of a little town of Diamond Bluff. It's basically right across the river from Red Wing, from the, um, the Treasure Island Casino. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, you know, on the Wisconsin side. And we've got so much cool new stuff out. And, you know, keep it local. And she does drop shipping. And, and um, so, uh, yeah, it's taking my business and letting other people make money off of my business, too. Mm -hmm. that, that's... Or make money together. Yeah. Is it all direct to garment printing? Is like yeah. that's how it is. Yep. Yeah. So what, for people who don't understand, and this is one of the beautiful things about like living and working in the age that we are, is like before you had to have an investment money. Like if you want to make shirts, you need a couple grand in order to make your however mm -hmm. many shirts, and then you had to keep them at your house, you know, or whatever warehouse, right. and you had to individually ship all these things. Drop shipping for anyone that isn't aware is somebody can go online and click I want this shirt in a large and blue order. Then the company that handles the drop shipping goes, dope, let's go make this. Mm -hmm. And they make it that day or within however many days, and then they ship it direct to you. So even though it's your brand, you, you never physically touch it, you never ship yeah. it, right? Yep. And so the, obviously that company has to take a portion of it so you don't make as much profit, yep. but it makes it much more doable when you're a one-man operation. And I'm, and I'm reaching people that I don't physically, you know, that I'm yeah. not physically reaching. And I, my followers, are, you know, it's it's a roller coaster ride. The merch sales are a roller coaster ride. And I yeah. don't go into a bar and, you know, come walking in with totes and be like, hey, this is what, a lot of times I'm like, oh crap, I didn't even mention that I have merch sure. you know i don't push my merch and it usually just takes one person to be like hey where can i get one of those hats i'm like in my truck yeah, <laughs> you know sure, and then yeah. it's you know and, and like there's been times where i've sold two thousand dollars of merchandise at one bar wild but that's a such a secondary part of what right. you're doing that's, so it's yeah. not like you're going in there and then setting up a booth yeah and then being like cool i'll drink at my booth with you while you potentially buy my stuff but if you did that it would also kind of kill everything that you're doing right you know what i mean because that's not what it's about in the first place yeah. it's just kind of the secondary but again i think if you like focus on like what's important to you what your vision is i think the money kind of comes without you really trying too hard. You you do have to cultivate it a bit, but like if all you're focused on is the money, it's gonna be so much more elusive. Mm -hmm. If you're focused on creating the thing, right. the money you're will just always come. Gonna, you're always gonna feel like you're chasing it. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, yeah, like I, just doing this, it's so, I wouldn't say effortless, but the whole concept of it is like it's, you know, like you said, I'm not chasing that buck. It's like, man, okay, I gotta make $300 this weekend. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's not that at all. Um, and the coolest part is that like I created something where I could just be myself and I love it. And why would I create something where I'm not myself? Like, yeah, this is who I am here. I'm the same guy here as I am when I'm be at dive bars later today, or when I'm at my regular job on Monday, I'm the same, you know, same person. So, yeah. um, so yeah, that makes it easier. I mean, why you don't create a, 
uh, online character, you know? That, yeah. That it's takes. not sustainable. It's not sustainable if you do that. So you start making uh, all the merch and you're selling that. Your social media was blowing up. That does not mean you make a bunch of money. That's mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like a one tool to potentially make money, but it doesn't make you mean about, does not mean that you make a bunch of money. You still have a regular job. I do. How, like how? <laughs> <laughs> my, I have, I have my regular job. I've been, uh, you know, doing like cabinetry work, like finished carpentry work for, uh, I guess I've been doing it since I was 19 and I'm 47. So, um, and oddly enough, like sometimes I build bars in people's basements or their garages or in their, you know, whatever. So you're um, self-employed doing that? Nope. I work for a, work for a co- little company, um, okay. in, on the West side of the state in, in little town of Hager city, Wisconsin. Um, we, we kind of have like an hour and a half, two hour radius of where like, we go all over the place. We're in the yeah. cities and like we did a job in, um, North Oaks, Minnesota, $16 million house. It was Whoa. insane. Like, but, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's how I, that's how I pay the bills. Right. Um, you know, work on Monday through Thursday there. And then, uh, and then I do the dive bar thing on the how, weekends. How many time, how many bars do you try to get to in like for one month? Like what do you have? So like, I got to assume you pretty much have a schedule where it's like Monday through Thursday or whatever you work this job, mm-hmm. which means Friday, Saturday, you need to be able to get to these bars, which means Sunday, you need to be able to edit the videos and start over again. Do yeah. you have a schedule like that? Yeah, it's uh, at first, that was the hardest part is finding the groove yeah. of how to make it work because there was a couple stretches um, where I hit 22 bars in 36 hours. Whoa. And I was like, yeah, this is not, doable. this is overdoing it. It's not sustainable. <clears throat> so I, you know, I backed off of that, but I, so, um, I actually average reviewing a bar every 1.45 days since day one. Sure. Um, so a bar around every 36 hours around the clock, 24, seven, 365. Um, but I probably in a 30 day month, I'm probably hitting 26 bars sure but how many do you do in one go do you try to like three to five each time you go out yeah it depends on the day um i know today's a a crazy busy day maybe i'll only hit one or two today just because i've got i've got some other stuff going on um but i would say you know on the weekends i try to hit three or four sure and you do that maybe more yeah okay so you usually go out like one maybe two days a week yeah and then that's what covers you yeah and i like I usually don't review bars on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, sometimes Thursdays. Because there's not a lot of people there I, and yeah, you're working. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, typically, you know, typically it's a, I would say out of the 645 bars, I would say 620 of them were done on a Friday or a Saturday. Do you ever feel tempted to, obviously like doing the work that you do, it's stable and I'm sure the pay is pretty decent for what you do and I'm sure you enjoy it. Um, and there's no pressure then because financially like you have your stuff like lined up and you're good, but do you, don't you feel... Like you could walk away from that um, to be able to put more time and energy into it because juggling a lot sucks sometimes. Um, man. I, I mean, I I probably could, but I actually need that because it does cost a ton of money to yeah. do what I do. Um, you know, I can go out on a weekend and and sell two thousand dollars worth of merchandise. Um, that's not all profit, but then you know, if I if I go down to Milwaukee, I mean, that's you know, I'm putting on six, seven, eight hundred miles on my truck. You know, there's a lot of quick trip stops. Yeah. Um, so you, you get know, a hotel between gas and the hotels, yeah. you know, sometimes. Um, so yeah, that stuff, you know, if I get a hotel room, man, I've got to sell, I've got to sell 15 t shirts just to pay for that hotel, you yeah, know? Yeah, sure. So you know, just got to break, <clears throat> break it down like that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's hard because you don't want to muddy it up with sponsorships and stuff yeah. either. You know what I mean? Because, realistically like the promotion that these bars get out of it is worth a decent amount of money, mm-hmm. but you don't want to take away from that either. But it's, it's, yeah. I don't know. I guess it's hard. I know so many touring musicians and comedians and stuff, but clearly the venues pay them. You yeah. Know what I mean, right. Yeah. And that's like right from the first bar I posted, people just started commenting. You got to go here. You got to go here. You got to go here. And that's what it is. And yeah. like, the, I literally, I should have brought my notebook. I have, I actually took like four hours um, last weekend to update my notebook i write down i'll take screenshots of people like messages whatever so it's on my phone i will literally write them down in my book so i know when i get to an area you know or if people shoot me a message on facebook i love that because you know say somebody 
recommends a bar in Eau Claire, yeah. I just punch in Eau Claire in my keyword search. And oh, anybody sure. you know that mentioned Eau Claire, then I can see the bars right there. So. so how I mean, I'm sure at the beginning it was like exciting to be like, oh, cool, I'm going to go over towards the Madison area yeah. and like hit a bunch of bars because it's like kind of a little vacation thing, like going over there. But I, I'm sure pretty quick you're like over driving that far. It becomes more of a chore. Uh, Did you like, how do you decide what parts of the state to go to um, and kind of line up the ones that are further away? And is that something where you try to only do that like once a month because it's so expensive? Or? Yeah. Um, well, I do this every other weekend. I do the dive bar thing every other weekend. I've got my daughter um, every other week. So being dad always comes before being yep. the dive bar guy. Um but yeah, I'll, like a lot of time I'm booked like two months out and I just kind of, all right, I'm going to head towards the Green Bay area. You know, if there's something going on in an area like um, like Country Boom Music Festival, that's always the weekend after the fourth. Um, like they, you know, they've reached out to me the last couple of years. I've hung out there. I got to see Nelly in concert, which was Dude, awesome. I, I heard that show was awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. And, yeah. you know, so then, of course, I'm hitting, you know, I'm going. So like the concert was, you know, Thursday from like six to midnight, Friday, four to midnight, Saturday, four to midnight. I'm going and hitting bars before I go to the concert because I need, I need my footage too. Right. Yeah. You know, so it, like, I love that. Uh, like I love country boom. I love John. That's one of the co-founders who is, you know, hooked us up. Um, but at the same time, like it makes my weekend really insane yeah. because I mean, who the hell pre games it and goes to bars before they go to a, concert where they get free beer you know yeah so, sure yeah yeah but i mean you, i guess i feel like it would be hard to not take breaks yeah like because it, it's such a marathon when you have to put out that much mm -hmm. content like i used to go out to la and then record 10 episodes in a week so that way it's like just Oops. way too much but yeah. then i'm backlogged and i'm like good for a right. while but you can only like backlog so much content with what you're doing yeah i, I you know i'm i maybe backlog you know two weeks sure you know um, I never post live. I never, you know, go into a play. It's like some people don't realize how much editing goes into doing what I do. And I, I think I actually did things backwards. I, you know, I got to a point where like, I look at my early edits and I'm like, this is so like, it's not good. Like yeah. the editing, you know, uh, and the, and the filming, but I, so I actually think I edit in a way that makes my filming easier. Yeah, well, I think and yeah, both. vice versa. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, as you do it, you realize what you did and what mistakes and where it could have been yep. easier because you're fixing a problem and you're like, well, I'm not going to make that problem now. So I'm going to intentionally like you definitely do learn all those things. And I think it, it's not so much that like the editing does take time. I'm not trying to take that away from you. But it's not so much the editing, it's more so uploading it to all the different platforms right. and then all of the interaction you gotta do on all the different platforms and then like yeah, you have never to cultivate ends. all of those communities and like that's what takes way more time. Mm -hmm. Like the actual editing of this does take a while, but the reason it takes a while for me is because I'm cutting 30 clips, but then I have to upload them to each of the platforms with their own descriptions and then right. with the locations. Like it, it takes a long time to do all of that part of it. Yeah, yeah, it's way more work for you than what it is right. for me, you know, yeah. but. Um, but I mean, I, I love that part and I, you know, like at first I was, I was playing music over top of my, um, after my intro and then with all the copyright stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I started to like quickly, I like four months into this probably, um, I was fortunate my ex-wife's, um, second husband passed away and I was at his celebration life. Cause that's just how we, right, sure. just how we roll. Um, and I was there and somebody, I was talking to somebody and somebody walked by and I'm like, are you the guy I see on Facebook doing all the dive bar stuff? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what the hell are you doing here? And I'm like, well, yeah. you know, Becky's kids, yeah. Taylor and Lily, I'm like, they're my daughters. They're like, no way. Yeah. You know, so that I realized I, I was starting to get recognized by voice too. Mm. And with having so many people trying to rip off what I do, that's, so I'm like, well, let's use my recognizable voice to my advantage and do the voiceover thing so that's kind of you know it's yeah. the competition that forced me to not i'm always trying to change and tweak and you know never want to stay totally the same all the time but um but yeah i've been doing the voiceover thing i think for probably a year and a half or so now and yeah. i i i love that part of it you yeah know? well I'm, starting yeah. the video with your face helps yeah yeah you know what i mean i think I need to get better about, because I've been kind of like thinking how to, I, I understand that the majority of people are going to see a clip from this. 
you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're not going to see the whole interview. Like I just edited, I was, I was collecting all the numbers, um, from the Billy Deuce interview, right? Because I'm going to be using his studio to interview the skateboarder, uh, Craig Luskin in a few weeks. That's the plan. So I was like, before I reach out to him, I want to hit him up and say, Hey, this is what the numbers ended up being dude between like views on YouTube shorts, Instagram stories, Instagram posts, Instagram reels, TikToks. um, between all of it combined, there was like 130 some thousand views. Yeah. But the interview, the full it's, interview has yeah. 1.3 thousand. Yeah. But 130 some thousand yeah, total it's, views. It's crazy. And it's the number. It's fun when you get a video to take off. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. But that's I, without any of them. Go, that's without any of them taking off. But what I, what I was yeah. getting at was like. I'm, it made me more aware of, I need to be really intentional about when I'm cutting the clips, trying to make them where it shows me in it at the beginning. Right. So that way, regardless if anybody sees what the profile is, they know, oh, it's that guy. I rather saw that just, guy. Oh, I saw that Yeah, guy. rather than just a random mm-hmm. right. spot or whatever. Yeah. Right, right. So I think branding it in that kind of way really yeah. helps. Do you ever, have you ever gotten to a point where you're like, I want to expand outside of this because you've gone to a lot of Wisconsin bars. I understand that like that number of bars is never going to run out because yeah. there's new bars opening all the time right. and the number was just so massive to begin with. Have you ever gotten to a point where you like kind of want to expand into anything else? Um, I mean, I, there, I don't think there's any question. I'm going to jump states. Yeah, sure. Um, but I feel like I need to be loyal to Wisconsin first. Um, I've hit 55 of the 72 counties. So I feel like before I truly jump to another state, like I'll always hit Wisconsin too. Um, but you know, like maybe take a weekend trip to the UP. Um, which I think is just northeastern Wisconsin anyway. Yeah. Um, or, you know, jump to Iowa or Minnesota, whatever. But, uh, you know, maybe just do it for a weekend. And because I was in Arizona in March and I, I hit a couple bars. I, I had to tell myself, relax. Like I have to I have to learn how to relax because I, I just go, 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 go. Yeah. And so I, I probably hit six bars in Arizona, but I, two of them were legit dive bars. And so... I reviewed them and, and went to Brewer Spring training as well. And, and those bars took off down there, uh, like on TikTok. like one, I think I don't, one did like four, 450,000. The other yeah. one did 150,000 just on, just on TikTok. And like, I gained like three, 4,000 followers from that. Like people in Arizona now they're like, Oh, you got to come to such and such bar in Scottsdale. And you gotta, <laughs> I'm like, all right. Like, so I, and because I'm a small business, cause I'm an LLC and I have been, um, I believe it was April 3rd of 2023 is when I officially turned it into a small business. So like within three months, um, like it's a tax write off for me, Yeah, sure. you know, and like my tax lady, you know, she's like, well, it's only a write off if that's why you're going to Arizona. I'm like, absolutely. That's why I'm, I'm going to Arizona for the dive bars. The fact that I'll see the grand Canyon or the Brewer mm-hmm. spring training game is, you know, Dude, same thing for me. I went to Texas. I drove a road trip to Texas specifically for an interview. Yeah, that's great. That's now is that that's like awesome. that's dedication. Financially, does is that the best move? No, but that was with the the managing editor of Thrasher Magazine, Michael yeah. Sieben. Like, I'm a huge fan, and they put that episode on the front page of ThrasherMagazine.com, cool. which is the only thing in skateboarding that people care about. Yeah, that was a huge deal for me. Like, did I gain a ton of followers and stuff from it? No, but like. To me personally, that meant a lot. But still, the reason I went was for that interview. Was it a good financial decision? No, but like I, that's why I went. Right? <laughs> yeah, make a memory though too. At the yeah, same time, no. it's let's talk about moving into like having a vodka. That's like making T-shirts and like hats and having drop shipping is like honestly a lot easier than people think. Mm-hmm. Uh, to do it well is difficult, but to just like have T-shirts made is really easy. Yeah, um, having a vodka made is not very easy. So like, how did that come about? How big of a role do you have in it? What partners are involved? Um, so yeah, Dan, uh, Dan and his wife Kim, who own Timekeeper Distillery in Wausau. It's an old train depot turned into a distillery. And Dan's been a brewmaster for fifteen years, so oh, he's. Sure. You know, he's not just some guy that's putting stuff in bottles. Like he, he knows his stuff. Um, Dan and Kim are great. And he reached out to me like maybe in April and asked me, asked me if I'd be interested in having my own liquor. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, absolutely. So next thing you know, we start going through, you know, all right, give me your, I need your uh, logo, whatever. Give me a PDF, your logo, whatever. So he would, Dan did most of the work. Um, So we ended up then getting together because I was at my regular job, um, working, putting a bar. There's a liquor store kind of where I work and they're turning the liquor store into a bar, a section of it. And one of the sales reps for bills distributing out of Menominee, 
I just happened to be there that day and he recognized me. So we were talking. I'm like, yeah, I said, you know, I've got my own vodka coming out, whatever. And it, this was just before Memorial Day, I remember. And uh, so he gave me his card and ended up getting together with bills. Like there was numerous emails, um, uh, just conference calls, uh, video chats um, to get lined up with a distributor because you, you can have whatever you want but if you don't have a way to distribute it through the state like it's right. you know um so we have bills distributing which they are fantastic they've got a place in superior now too um and i think they're just my vodka is available any bar in the state can get it like bills sure. distributing will get it to them so it's it's been a lot of you know just a, there's so much so much that goes into it but um but and it's it's really good vodka like we wanted it you know, I didn't want the expensive vodka. Um, I want something that bars can use for their real vodka because Wisconsinites drink so much vodka. Yeah. You know, whether it's, you know. An, and at uh, dive bars, you're getting real drinks. Yeah, <laughs> most right. Of the time. Yeah, and, you know, whether it's a Bloody Mary or just a vodka lemonade or a screwdriver or, a, you know, screw up, whatever. Um, so, so yeah, it's uh, it officially hit the shelves like a week or so ago, two weeks ago, I think. Um, How many places are you in right away? that i don't even know I, really? I i don't even know right off the bat and i know here soon i will have access to an app that will show, show every place where it's at so if somebody yeah. you know messages me you know i'll be able to let them know or even post on my socials like hey grab it here 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 so so the way it's situation the like the way it's set up is more so somebody else runs the business and you're the face of the brand and you get a percentage of yeah. all the like, yep. overall profit and because it's your name likeness and branding yep there's contracts in it and yeah so basically i guess i'm kind of the spokesperson i guess maybe i don't you know sure I, but you um, have ownership in the brand yeah it's yeah. so it's, it's it's you know it's a business partnership like i said there's uh trademarks there's contracts right. there's yeah so there's sure. a lot of a lot of the not fun stuff but the stuff that all dude but to, what, to be honest like the fact that somebody else hit you up yeah and then was willing to do all of the work that you were definitely not in the position to do to make this happen is like pretty dope man yeah <laughs> yeah and you know it's yeah i tell people you know sometimes you you just never know not just influencer wise but just everyday life you never know when you're gonna bump into somebody that can change the game yeah um and i i'm hoping dan is one you know dan and his wife kim are those people that could do that for me but at the same time i can return that favor totally. to them because you know they've got a bunch of great products out you know themselves that he, that he already had before you know before my vodka was available yeah i mean again i think it's like having more people on your team you all win together absolutely like there's and, no there's no reason to like try to hoard all of the eyes the views the dollars for yourself if you're so worried about protecting the money that you make rather than just making more money yeah. with people you're just gonna see a slow dwindle over time yeah I like who wants to who wants to celebrate alone yeah you know? dude no absolutely and so that's what's kind of been cool about like when i when i was doing all these interviews in la it was dope because i made a lot of friends that did a lot of different things that i like never thought i'd be able to talk to people about because like why would i know somebody that has choreography with mariah carey you yeah. know what i mean but then <laughs> i do that i'm like oh that's like pretty cool yeah. and really interesting but there i miss that camaraderie you know i would come back here and i felt like i was kind of on my own little island a bit of like nobody None of my friends really like could relate to what I was doing because nobody else was really doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and it didn't like change where I like lost all my friends or anything. And like my closest best friends are still the same people. So that hasn't changed. But I found myself like who I related to with. I felt kind of alone, felt really lonely in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but then as I started meeting more people like Ryan and Chris and you and like all these other people that are in the Midwest doing different like small business, creative content, music, all that type of stuff in the Midwest, all of a sudden it was like, oh, now I feel like I'm part of a club again. Yeah. And it's like, there's a whole community of us. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I dig watching other people's stuff and I, you know, you always see people doing stuff and you're like, think about something that you could do to tweak off of, you know, kind of, right. oh, maybe. I need to do this a little bit different, you know, and just yeah, inspires not you. steal their ideas, yeah, it's but yeah, inspires just, you. yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I talked to this kid, Richie Murphy yesterday, he's 21 and he's a D3 football player at Stout, like, but he's got 180,000 followers on Instagram. Hmm. Yeah, pretty wild, dude. Yeah. And then a bunch on like all the other platforms, he's now like as a deal with Quick Trip and everything. And he was basically just explaining like, look, dude, I have a specific niche, right? what is wrong with me taking a video that I saw that did well for somebody else and then making it into my, my own thing? Mm -hmm. Did I steal the idea? 
I mean, kind of, but like we all steal ideas anyways. Mm -hmm. It's different if you're like, literally, let me make a brand and copy your logo and like try to like pretend to be you basically. Like that's a totally different thing. But pulling from what somebody else does and having that be your own idea, there's nothing wrong with that. And especially when we- stools does that. Dude, exactly. But but, but even them, that's like resharing things. But what I'm talking about is like, if Ryan has a video that like does really well or whatever, his persona and his branding and everything is different than mine. Mm-hmm. So if I created basically what he did, but with my own voice in relation to the things that I do, it is different content. There's no reason that you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing if you pretend, like if somebody asks you directly where you got the idea and you lie about it, you know, that's one thing. But pulling from other people that are successful, especially if they're your friends, I don't see an issue with that at all. No, no, I don't either. I mean, everybody, you know, you just tweak it and make it your own. and. Mm. You know, because uh, obviously Charlie's stuff is uh, his, he's got a whole team behind him, yeah. you know? Um, so it's, he's on a totally different He's the level. king of Wisconsin content. Yeah. <laughs> without, without a doubt. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine how much work mm-hmm. it is for him, but you know, at the same time, he doesn't do the editing and you know, yeah. most of it, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe he does some or has sure. a hand in what the finished product. I think, is, I think a big part of it is just like, you just do the best that you can with the resources that you have. And you understand like, do I want to be as successful as this person I see? Do I want my things to work as good as this person? Like comparisons, the thief of joy, just uh, do the best that you can with what you got and try to learn from the other people that are around you and try to lift each other up. And like, it'll, it'll work out if you keep working on it long enough. Like it just yeah. will work. Well, and like, I was maybe like four months into this, um, miles the you betcha guy. Yep. Um, he posted that um, he was going to do a small town Wisconsin dive bar tour. Yeah, and like I log out of Facebook. Like when I'm at my regular, I usually log out of Facebook all the time unless I get on it. Log mm-hmm. right out. I get off of work one day and my phone is literally blowing up like ten times worse than it usually does. And I'm like, what is going on? And Miles posted that he was doing a small town dive bar tour, and people were going after him like, hey, there's somebody in the state that already does this, you know, yeah. whatever. I literally had to make a post on my Facebook saying, you know, on my Instagram, I'm like, you guys, like, it's cool. Like th- I'm, I'm cool right. with him doing that because these bars are getting the business, you know, yeah. the, the publicity. I'm like, it's, and Miles actually messaged me. Um, I, I believe maybe I might've been on TikTok. Um, but, uh, yeah, he messaged, we messaged back and forth a few times and he's like, you know, totally cool conversation, but yeah. I'm like, I shouldn't, you know, I, sh- I'm flattered that somebody of his stature is, mm-hmm. you know, kind of obviously him or somebody on his team has seen what I've done. Yeah. And, you know, so, but that was weird. Like, yeah, that was maybe like back in April or May. But of that only helps you. Yeah. Because again, people will see his video from his audience and from whatever. Mm-hmm. And if they like that, they're going to look for more stuff similar. The algorithm will show stuff that's similar, yeah. which yours is similar. And then they'll find yours and go, oh, wow, there's a whole treasure trove yeah. of all of this stuff. Yeah, I think he ended here. up hitting like four or five bars. He hit the do dodge. I saw that one. Yeah. yeah, I watched it when I was like, again, looking yeah. at your stuff on YouTube and that popped up and I was like, oh, Claire, killer. And like had a crazy amount of views and good for him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that was right. And the production value, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, yeah, it was definitely dope. Yeah. It's, you know, there's so many different wisconsin content creators that it's like there's got to be some sort of overlap there, as far overlap. as you know like a yeah. wisconsin clothing company too like yeah, yeah. wisconsin clothing company like he puts out a bunch of stuff too and and uh yeah it's like you I, know i, I enjoy seeing, all... seeing their stuff and he's yeah. all over the place too and i know he's got a little one at home so i know yeah. that's a lot harder for him to run a company and the online the socials too you yeah know? i think we all win together one thing that has helped you so you started on tiktok which is kind of crazy um just more so not to like give be an ageist <laughs> yeah but your age group's not heavy on tiktok um but you started on tiktok and then it started to try to like go to all the platforms you kind of have to cover all platforms these days like if you want to make content but some will work better for different things yeah. but it's really hard to be good at all of them mm-hmm. Um, why'd you start on TikTok? And then as that has progressed, like kind of what order did you move into? And right now, what are you working on? Yeah. So I like, I'm on TikTok. Um, I think from TikTok, I moved to Facebook as well. And then Instagram kind of at the same time and, uh, and on YouTube as well. And then just using the same video. Yeah. Earlier this year, I, I got on the threads bandwagon too, I guess. I'm like, I'm not on. But you're just repurposing the same content. Yeah, right? a lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it is. Okay. Um, and I was so impressed with myself being, you know, 47 years old. I, I figured out how to link my Instagram to my Facebook. Yeah. 
And uh, I'm like, so anything I post on Facebook goes to my Instagram. This is wild. I yeah. can't, you know, but so I think I had Instagram for maybe a year and it was the end of March. So like a year and a half ago, I had 997 followers on Instagram. And I told my girlfriend, we were taking a trip to Kenosha doing a dive bar trip. And I, I told her, I said, uh, I need to work on Instagram itself like yeah. it needs to be its own thing and like i wasn't hashtagging stuff like i was and uh so i took an old video um which just happened to be the little brown jug in Monaco, which in my eyes is probably one of the top three coolest bars in the state of wisconsin <laughs> cool and uh, so i threw that on instagram um kind of repurposed that threw it on instagram and i think it did over three hundred thousand. um and all of a sudden my instagram started taking off and i don't even i think i hit forty nine thousand last night actually on instagram oh, so i mean so in a year and a half i went from 997 right. to forty nine thousand. so instagram has been a nice steady climb i like the instagram aspect of it um threads is one of those where i don't scroll hardly ever at all you yeah. know um and then youtube i actually use youtube because i do have a website as well uh wiscodivebars.com you can jump on and it'll every bar i've been to is pinned Oh, cool. And you can zoom in, click on any pin, and it'll pull up my video. And then there's a big blue button that says navigate here, and it'll take you right to that Did bar. Did you make that or somebody else? I made had it? somebody. Oh, geez, I was going to say, that sounds Somebody else typical. made that for me. But I, I actually yeah. go in and I update it myself. Yeah, okay. Um, so I do all that. So it's it's uh, pretty wild because like, it shows me, too, like gaps in the state where I need to get to. I need to fill yeah. you know these pockets. I was wondering so, how you kept track of all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it is a lot of work. Um, you know, I love the whole you know I, it, so many people don't know about my website but i'm getting six thousand hits a month on it sure and it's one of those websites that people are just going to keep coming back to you know mm -hmm. because it's but that's know, anything man think, again people are in their own bubbles and they only see their one thing this, yeah. the, there's i'm sure a ton of people out there that think of you only as that tiktok guy yeah and don't even know oh, yeah. you're on the other platform but there's other yeah. people that only know you on facebook and don't even know you have a tiktok right yeah you know what i mean yeah. like that's how it works and i did have one bar um it was over in the shano area um like a year and a half ago and the guy this is the first time i thought about it but it was i you know i told him he was the owner bartender and told him what i do and he's like well yeah he's like i yeah i'd love it he didn't know who i was but he's like i just don't want my stuff on tiktok and i'm like you know because obviously he watches the news and sure obviously people are gonna china's gonna hack his bar or something if if oh. i put his video on tiktok kind of thing i you know i don't know um so I'm like, I absolutely respect that. And yeah. that video is not on TikTok. Um, it's on the other formats, but not uh, not TikTok. Um, so I thought, so then I started, because so many of these people at bars are older, you know, people are like, oh yeah, what do you, instead of saying, you know, I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, I mean like, I mean on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you know, I'd shove TikTok further down sure. the list to yeah. make it blend in, you know, um, because I, I never, just walk into a bar and and video i always go in first i would I, assume so. it's always always have to be respectful right you know yeah. you have to there's dive bar etiquette and yeah you know i just always want to respect everybody well, nobody if, wants if, to be filmed without being asked right yeah and yeah. If, if if you have a warrant then you just go have a smoke or something while i'm doing my video or something sure, you know i don't yeah. know and i do not, i never post live but but uh but yeah it's there's a lot of i do a lot of i go out of my way a lot to make everybody else comfortable and yeah you know be respectful yeah i think it would just make better quality video for yourself anyways because it would be awkward to be in front of a camera and then like go talk to people without them knowing like right. that's why it, when people do that type of content like Wyatt Iden does where he just like approaches people like dude i can't i couldn't do that yeah like it would be so uncomfortable for me yeah and it, it has gotten a lot easier you know going to bars now that it's wild going to a bar five hours away from home and people yeah. know who i am well, yeah, but I mean, you're such a niche thing. Yeah. You're like the, specifically, you're the Wisconsin bar guy. Mm -hmm. So if anyone cares about any of that type of stuff, which they probably do because they go to that, you would be the only, you would yeah. be the first person they think of. Yeah, and I feel like the first, I don't know, I, I feel like the first three, four, five months, it was, it was like a sales pitch going into every single bar. All right, this is what I do. You know, yada, 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 yeah, yada, sure. yada. All right, then I do my thing. Drive right. two miles down the road again same thing you know um but it's it's what i had to do to to build mm -hmm. what i what i have and and um yeah i'm glad that so many people love what i do and i love meeting my love meeting my followers i have i have the best followers on social media no offense to your followers yeah, on social media but no, um, I but yeah I, I mean 
just the nicest people. It's that that you know everybody says Minnesota nice. I think Wisconsin's a little nicer than Minnesota. But. <laughs> yeah, but you're gonna have to start expanding, right? So what's yeah. what's kind of gonna be next? You're gonna be expanding to Minnesota just because you're so close to the border. Yeah, on that and side. I I grew up um, like I said, a little town of Spring Valley. I, I can be in downtown St. Paul in 40 minutes sure, from my yeah, place. So there's you know, so many. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, like where I've hit a lot of concerts, obviously in the twin cities and stuff. So, I mean, Minnesota would be, um, would be convenient. Um, but I, uh, the, the UP interests me sure, because I think there's a, I think there's a lot of backwoods. I'm sure there is. Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, a lot of these bars, I couldn't find them without my followers suggesting them. They suggest them and I will Because well, they don't even have work. Google like listings for a so, while. Yeah. So yeah. there's, uh, there's been a handful of bars that don't, they don't even have Facebook. They don't, yeah. and they don't show They're up on Google. Anywhere. I'm yeah. like, how <laughs> you're running a small business and you literally are running it like it's 1975. Yeah, but, but the people in those towns, man, like they're not expecting anyone coming from out of town. Right. Like they're in business because of the same 20 people that live right there that drive yeah. past it. And it's just. And, and that's the cool part about these bars. So many of them are just time machines. Like mm-hmm. as fast as the world moves, as soon as you open that door to the bar to come outside, some of these bars are just stuck in 1972. And I absolutely love it so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, nothing's changed. It might not be the cleanest place, but man, they've got awesome food. And, and you know, they anytime there's a benefit or something going on, where's the first person people run to are these are these taverns. So, yeah, um, and that's that was my mindset when I started it, too, because I thought if I can make them more money, I can, you know, allows mm-hmm. them to put back into the community even more. So, yeah, so it's kind of a. You know, um, and a lot of these bars are really nice too. Like people are like, "Well, this isn't a dive bar." I know it's not, but it's a town of eight hundred people, and it's it's a beautiful place. But man, yeah. and they give back so much to the community that yeah, you know, I'm all about supporting them. It's a locally owned small business, so right, exactly. Well, and that's what people don't realize about like the economy is small business is what runs everything. They're mm-hmm. the only reason that there are these fundraisers. They're the only reason that these events happen. They're the only reason the parks get built. And like, it's it's the businesses. Yes. I shouldn't say the only, right? You live there, you pay taxes, but it's like the businesses are the reason that yeah. so many like cool things are happening. And if you have a way of benefiting them that doesn't cost you anything, like why wouldn't you try to support them? Right. Yeah. And I love, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge music fan. There's some days I wake up and I want to listen to Pantera. Some days I want to listen to ACDC. Sometimes it's Miley Cyrus. Sometimes it's Dirty Prescott Kids or Chris <laughs> Cruzy. It's a, it's yeah. a mood thing. Um, and I just love supporting the local musicians as well. And that's, that's when my editing gets crazy hard when I, cause I get caught up all the time watching these and I, I try to keep my videos under a minute and I'm like, I just put up 25 minutes worth of videos of this band performing. I got to edit this down to a minute. Like, how, yeah. like, how am I going to do this? You know, and you know, do them a little justice too. Cause you know. Um, cause I, I, they're all just, uh, you know, that was jelly roll at one point in time, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. that was, you know, that was poison. That was, you know, Ozzy, you know, do same thing. Like all these musicians, I think started the same way, like playing in bars. And, yeah. Well, and you want to promote them in the right kind of way, yeah. which is, which is really tough. We could talk forever. I'm like very well aware of this and we're going to have to like, just go drinking me. Yeah. And, I don't know if Ryan's invited because he is he part. <laughs> no, Ryan's definitely invited. Um, but and we should do some like little podcast episodes, the three of us or some of these Absolutely. other people too. Like especially in Ryan's little garage bar, mm-hmm. like that would be the spot for it. I'll bring all the equipment and it'll work. All right. At the end of the episode, I ask everyone the same question, which I told you ahead of time to share. I ask them to share a unique experience that happened to them that they're really grateful for, but only happened because they pursued their passions. Did you think of one? Yeah. And so this one's a little bit different. So I was on a road trip. Gosh, was it last May? I took a picture of, we were up by Highway 8, because people in Wisconsin know what Highway 8 means. I took a picture of Highway 8. My girlfriend was driving. I took a picture and I said, hey, people, like I'm, you know, Highway 8, you know, I'm, I had a meet and greet planned at a bar in Cameron that night and uh, had no idea at the time that this was going to be a post that I'll never forget. But um, so many people commented on it and we were working our way back to Cameron that day. And we had cops flying by us. And uh, that was the same day that Emily Bradenbach and Hunter Scheel were, were unfortunately um, oh, killed sure. in the line of duty. I didn't know it until Tuesday afterwards, this was Saturday. Um, Emily had commented on that post oh. and said, hey, you know, we go to, uh, you know, she told me a bar in, in Cameron that, that she uh, 
drink at? And she's like, and, you know, better yet, like make it after six and I'll buy your first drink. Oh, sure. And obviously she never made it. But um, and I went back to that bar. I was in Superior and they had a memorial ride for her. And um, I got up at six o'clock in Superior just to make it down there before those bikes left. And uh, and I went into the bar and I ordered a, a Twisted Tea Light. And the owner said, well, that's that's what Emily drank. I said, yeah. It's like, I know. Like, that's why I'm drinking it. Um, so I had a few of those. But but I'm just, you know, able to, you know, be involved in the community like that. And, you know, since they, they do fundraisers for, you know, the Back to Blue fundraisers. And I'm I'm all for supporting our law enforcement. And, and um, you know, as, as much as what I do is, is fun and games, like, that's just that's a day that I'll never forget. I, I never met Emily, unfortunately, sure. but I feel like I did. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, I mean, that's the power of what the internet can bring people together, right? Which yeah. is pretty crazy. Like you you don't think about, when you make that first video and you make that, that first post, you don't think about like how this could potentially impact significant number of people yeah. in, in any kind of way. It's more just like, oh, I made this, like maybe people like whatever, but you don't really think about the actual effects of what mm -hmm. impact that can have. Yeah. The internet brings people together, man. It does, and and so do these dive bars. And I, you know, I I love these little. They're almost their own little communities. They really are, you yeah. know. Within some of them are eight hundred square feet, and some of them are twenty eight hundred square feet. And and man, I love every every single one of them, and and the owners and the patrons and people, you know, and the bartenders as well. I mean, you can go to the best bar you've ever been to. If you have a crappy bartender, you won't go back. You yeah. can go to the crappiest bar you ever been to. If your bartender was awesome, you're going back. Yeah, and you're absolutely. tipping heavy. Yeah. Well, and the dive bars wouldn't they wouldn't last if they didn't have the best bartenders. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's like Abs part of why they last. Absolutely. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming over here. I know it was a little bit of a drive, but not too crazy. Um, we'll definitely have to record a bunch more content together, like more interviews. I really do think, like me, you, and Ryan together doing a podcast, even if it's not about any specific topic. I just think that would be fun and interesting yeah. in itself. Oh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I would, I would probably my guts would hurt from laughing so hard. I've yeah, got dude. a feeling. Yeah, you guys can carry the conversation. The <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.